Hello, gorgeous. Hello. Handsome. What's happening? You could have said hello, handsome. Hello, handsome. There you go. Right, so what we're doing right now, Michelle, we are driving. We're in our 1982 Porsche SE, our beloved car. We're driving on one of the most famous pieces of road in the whole of the world, the Pacific Coast Highway. We've got the ocean to our left. We've got Huntington Beach to our right. And uh, it's about, what, 100 degrees out there today? Very hot. It is incredibly hot. Like so hot, sauna. you have to wear a hat indoors. It's that no, hot. No, when the sunroof is open, oh, oh my know. God. I, I've just doled you down a bit. I just touched the screen. I do apologise. But here we are. We're in the car. We're on the PCH. And uh, we thought we'd do a little catch up with you and tell you what we've been up to recently. It all started a couple of weeks ago. Now, me and Michelle, unfortunately, uh, we don't get what most people get. They get a holiday. They get to go home. Or, sorry, from home. They get to go away for a couple of weeks. Go and sit on the beach in California or Spain or or just spend some time with the family, uh, but we don't really get a holiday. But we managed to squeeze a couple of weeks off back in the UK, but it wasn't really a holiday, it was work. So we had to go back to the UK to do some work. And uh, when we landed, the first thing that hit us was the weather back at home. Wow, it was hot. It was boiling. Yeah, very hot. It was... The grass has changed color, it's gone yellow. Yeah, our the garden... plants are dead. Plants are dead, garden looks like a desert, doesn't yeah, it? It's it ruined, our yeah. garden is ruined. Uh, so yes, we were surprised by the weather and then we went straight away to Silverstone Classic which is this amazing event at the famous Formula One circuit of Silverstone and there's a big classic uh, event, there's classic car racing and there's a classic car show uh, and there's all kinds of things going on throughout the day and then at night they have festivals and I'm hosting the uh, Haynes Manuals uh, live stage and there's a live stage and in between the race and I talk about classic cars and Misha runs a little merchandise shop and uh, again it was brutally hot yes very hot um, and it was so busy it's the busiest year to date it is yeah well, it I've never was absolutely it. packed it was fantastic I'd finish on stage and then stand and talk to people for a, a couple of hours until I was back on stage again and it never seemed to stop and uh, both of us want to say thank you uh, to those lovely people the that people stood in we work with Amazing, there, yeah, team. and thank you to the people that stood there in the sun okay. and waited to meet me. Uh, I really do appreciate yeah. it. It's very humbling and very nice. It was yeah, amazing. All ages. All ages? Yeah, it's great, wasn't it? Tiny people, big, tall yeah. people, small people. <laughs> Tiny people and yeah, tall people. Yeah, they were. They were. It was all, <laughs> they were all sizes. So we did that for a couple of days. Then straight away, we had to, uh, we had to go to Paris. Sounds glamorous going to Paris, but actually I was going to Paris for work. It was to go and make uh, the French version of Wheeler Dealers. Wheeler Dealers has now expanded across the world. There's now a, 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 a version in France and a version in Italy. And uh, the French company wanted me to go out there. I've done it before. And they wanted me to go there and appear on that show. It was hot in France. <laughs> oh my God. It was boiling. You're running before we can walk, Michelle. Yeah. We haven't even spoken I about getting to France. I always run. You, go, you just talk and take forever. Um, so, right, yeah, it was hot in France. Should we not tell him how we got to France? Yeah, well, I thought we was doing that half an hour ago when we started. Are you in some kind of rush? Where are you going? Um, are you in a rush? I'm straight and direct. You're I don't out. go around the yes. Are you in a rush to get somewhere? Why I'm do you always, always trying to get somewhere. Why are you trying to end the conversation before we even no. begin it? Anyway, we got in our car and we drove up the uh, motorway to the airport. Yeah, so we went to the airport at our allotted time. You know, two hours before an international flight, national flight, should I say, or international flight. Squeezed in one suitcase. Yeah, all squeezed in one suitcase. We had our daughter Chloe with us. It was really... Because Michael has a problem if you take more than one case. Because I'm the one who has to carry it. Why do you girls need so much stuff? When well, we, we're going away so for one stuff. night. Two nights we went away for. Take the smallest case and fit all the clothes in the smallest case. Two nights we went away for and you had the kitchen sink with us. No, I never. I couldn't fit it in the yeah, I know. You couldn't fit it in. If you could fit it in, you would have done. You, you absolutely would have done. So we get to the airport two hours oh before our arrival time. Uh, there is a hundred people in front of us, and there are two check-in staff. Uh, and in front of us was a, a very two check-in. I only saw two one. Check, two check-in staff. Mm. Uh, but uh, there was a, uh, a, a, a large, family. a huge family in front of us. Maybe about twelve of them, and each of them had three suitcases. They're obviously on their way they to a wedding. This, they had the sink in each case. Case, yeah, they did. They, they had did. the sink. Yeah, they're <laughs> and on their, the bath. And the bath, yeah. They're on their way to a wedding or something. Oh, sorry, I got. 
it's so sweat, hot. Sweat dropped in my eyes, it's so hot. And, um, and it didn't drop each, in my eyes, because no. I'm not hot. And each of the, oh, it's really stinging now. <laughs> it's difficult. Each of the cases was completely overweight. So we stood there as they unzipped and 30. And moved the sink from one to the, the other. other. Yeah, they were moving yeah. things around, and trying to get their attachment. cases uh, weighed the right way. And we just stood there patiently, and like you would do. Uh, and uh, then the, the other check-in agent just kept prioritising the people in the first class queue or the priority queue. He just kept uh, giving them preferential treatment oh, rather than the people happens. rather than the people that was just standing there flying economy patiently, patiently like us. Yeah. Uh, eventually when we get to the desk, and remember we've been there for nearly two hours, when we get to the desk, the Air France check-in agent, and I'll name check him, um, I have a picture of him. Yes, it said, uh, no, you've missed check-in. So, well, I haven't. I was here, like you told me to, two hours before, and I've just stood there patiently, five foot away from you, while you've been, you know, dealing with this person, but you, you never mentioned that you were checking, uh, shutting the check-in for the Paris flight, and he said, well, you missed it. This is such a long story. It's such a long story. So I said, okay, I can't miss it. I've got to be filming. And he said, well, you, you missed it. You might have it. to tune in for part two. You might. Some popcorn <laughs> yeah, you <later>. might. <laughs> he said, you missed it. So he said, the only thing you can do is, because we'd already checked in online and we were just dropping our case. He said, see if you can get your case on the flight. So we run upstairs through security, at which point... Upset a lot of people. At which point, me and Michelle are having a breakdown because Michelle's got all her potions, lotions and creams in the case. And of course, this guy said, well, you'll have to throw them away. And it's hundreds of pounds worth of stuff. But anyway... Um, no, there's not hundreds of pounds. Yeah. What are we to do that? Well, it must be your perfume that I bought cost a Just few quid. Just the perfume. Yeah, that's well, there was a couple of those bought. in there. Yeah, but that's it. So um, we get upstairs. That's not the point, though. It's mis being misinformed. Yeah. So we get the upstairs best. and uh, they take all this stuff out of our suitcase, scan the suitcase, and we realise there's still stuff in there. So they scan the suitcase again. And by this time, we've been there for ten minutes, so I'm panicking. So, so I told Michael to run for the plane and just get to work the destination. Get, get to work. So I, I, I run for the plane and it had gone. So we missed the, the plane to to France. Although we got up at like half past five, we'd missed it, and we were there in plenty of time. Due to it's the, now uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, due to the stupidity of the Air France check-in staff. So um, anyway. We, you know, you can't panic in that situation. You have to just So we adapt. get our case, they walk us out the airport. We get in our car just to get forward. We drive all the way back. And then I realize in the car, they have taken out Michael's shoes, belt, and a load of toiletries they didn't give back to us. But we had to um, carry on our journey. Yeah, so uh, we got home. Uh, we then jumped in a train all the way to London. Marley then, bone. That Marley took bone. a few hours. Then we get a tube all the way across London to St Pancras, or not all the way, but you know, across London to St Pancras. Then we jumped on the Eurostar train. But we met a lovely guy. We did. We, we met Arsene there. Wenger. He's a what big, a lovely person. He, he asked for a picture. He's a really yeah, nice guy. He's, he's a, a really fan. Lovely guy. Uh, the, he's the ex-Arsenal manager. For those of you who don't know, that's a he's football so team. He's so tall. I didn't realise how tall he was. Yeah, really he's tall. really tall. A really nice. Really so we, man. we met him. Then we we got the train, which was painless and very nice to do. Yeah. Uh, and we tip out in the centre of France. Uh, when I should have been there at half past eight in the morning, we arrived there at about Late ten. Late Yeah, uh, no, about ten o'clock by the time we get yeah. to the hotel at night. So, um, uh, and then France is just brutally hot. I can't tell you how Over hot it is. Over 40 degrees. Over 40 degrees, and so on. So the next day I get up. And they all speak funny, you don't understand what they say. <laughs> That's called French. Even when they explain <laughs> what they're saying in oh, English. Oh, le food de dieu, c'est du fromage, s'il vous plaît. So me and Michelle, so um, we get up the next morning and we go to work on the Wheel of Dealer set. And uh, it's... Good Ubers over in, there. In old money, or in new money, it's 45 degrees, which I think is about 115 or something. Uh, on one this, fan in the workshop. One, one, they had a like, couple of little fans in the workshop, but there was one blowing on me, uh, this little weenie fan, and it, no air conditioning. It was, so we went through this monumental day, and in the afternoon I was moving to film on a location. So I, me, Joe and Chloe went off into Paris in this stupid heat, uh, whilst we I walked, went off filming. Um, for six miles. Yeah, in Paris. It's amazing. Yeah. And then... Um, uh, I never got back until about 10.30 at night, 11 o'clock I think by the time I got back into Paris that night, but we, you know, Paris was still thriving, it was still buzzing, so we went and found a bar and something to eat and then, uh, uh, something to drink and then something to eat, 
Uh, and the next day we did a tiny bit of sightseeing. We went to the Eiffel Tower, but it was so hot, you couldn't really do anything. You had to just run between air conditioned buildings. Where was that place we went to? Oh, Mont Mont Montmartre. That was really nice. That was like a little um, uh, uh, artist community. Yeah, you wouldn't know it was there. You wouldn't know it was there. No, no, it was, it was right. really it's beautiful, lovely. wasn't it? Yeah. It's lovely. And we had Very nice high lunch. up. The view was amazing. Uh, and then we, we left there. And then we get back to the airport because we're flying home. So we get back to oh, the airport. You forgot to say that when, because we missed the flight, I'm flying just about out, to. They cancelled our flight. Coming back. back. That's what I was just about to say. Running before she could walk. Where are you going? Where are you going, woman? Back to the airport, to put where we had to pay for the flight to take us home. Yeah, they made us pay again. Air France, get your act in order. They cancelled my return flight and made me pay full price to fly Unbelievable. back. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we've had to pay twice. Uh, no uh, explanation from Air France, no apology, no nothing. Uh, they just allowed that to happen. I've reached out to them on social media and they've imagine basically you, ignored imagine me. Imagine if you were a family with loaded children. Yeah, it's disaster and going there were on four holiday. of you or more. That is so out of order. It is out of order. It was really terrible. Bad. Really bad. And then it, it to, gets better. It though. gets better. So we 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 get home. Late. No, no, oh no, 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 no sorry. No, no, no. Not You're only running. yeah, You're no, running. I'm running. Right, not I'm only run. do they give us the tickets on the return flight, full price tickets, they then tell us that the flight has been delayed three hours. When we sit down <laughs> for three hours, and they give us a voucher where we can go and buy a curled up sandwich. Yeah, curled up sandwich. Right? And a tin of drink or something. I know these are first world problems, but they are. No, but I'm just thinking of all the other families. Yeah, that were there. You know that were there. You may be getting uh, people picking them up. They've got appointments, they need to get their kids home. It was so It was horrible. Bad. It was horrible. So anyway, we finally get home at about one o'clock in the morning. To land, get a cab. Yeah, um, one, about one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, one o'clock. Yeah. And then uh, the next day we had to go back to the airport because of this missing pair of shoes, belt. It gets so we uh, we go back because we're coming back to America the following day, so we have to go and get my missing outfit. So we jump in the car, drive back to Birmingham Airport. Park heavy in the car traffic, park, yeah. heavy traffic, park in the car park, park. The car park. run into the airport and said uh, we got a reference number for the missing bag. Picked it up straight Picked away the up. next day, you know, the next day. And the guy says, yeah, here's your missing bag, eight pound please. I'm not, squeeze me, I beg your pardon, sorry. Uh, you, you, you never put my, you never give me back my bag. I said, hold on, on the phone, the lady told me it may be two pound fifty. Even two pound fifty is a rip charge. But even that, holding my bag after they kept and it. And we've got it straight away. And I know it's only eight quid, but it's not the point. It's the principle of the matter. So anyway, after a lot of duress, we paid, other... left the uh, left their office, went to the car park, and because we've been standing there arguing, the car park meter tripped over into the next hour, and we're in the short state car park, and it was like another 15 quid to get the car out. Yeah, so, so if we're like... anyone leaves anything behind, be aware you should only pay 250, <laughs> fight your corner, <laughs> Right, and remember, you've got to be really in and out because of the car parking. So right? there you, you go. You do not need to be ripped off. Yeah, don't be. Yeah, right? take advice. So that whole trip, thanks to you, Air France, was an utter disaster, and uh, it was absolutely ruined. And it should have been the only time where I had a couple of days with my wife and daughter as a bit of a holiday throughout this whole year. I've been working so hard. So, uh, um, you know, but anyway, and I've been thinking, right? So what has this got to do with cars? And why should I tell you all this? And why should we tell you all this? And it's really simple. Because I want to educate them. No, to be no, it's really simple. We should have bloody driven. That's why this is what cars are good for. They're good for getting in and going places. And we should have driven to Paris and we could have probably driven there in half the time it took us to get there eventually. And because of the delay coming half back, the cost? half and half the cost, a, fra a fraction of the cost. We should have driven and that's the good thing about cars. Cars, I think, are like time machines. You get in, you shut the door, you switch your radio on, you hit the gas pedal, and then you are transported somewhere else. I mean, look at us now. Yeah, you're transported somewhere else. Look at us. Me and you, we just left somewhere 20 miles ago, and we've been enjoying ourselves driving down this amazing stretch of road, and look, we're somewhere else now. So, if you like seeing a bit of Mike and a bit of me, Ooh, and hello. getting some updates we're on doing what's any happening, that. let us know. Yeah, I because like it. Because if you want more of this, then, you know, tick, tick the button or send a message or whatever and we'll see what we can do. Tick the button. Uh, yeah, tick the That's button. why I love it so much.
That is why I love it so much. Uh, no, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. We just wanted to fill you with what's been happening and some of the rambles you've seen on social media recently. Uh, right, we apologise that the video cut off. It's that hot, the phone actually turned itself off. It said the temperature is too much and it died. So we just wanted to come back online and we both wanted to say, Tell her. Tell her. See you later. Love you.